on a picture-perfect Sunday afternoon from Melbourne's western suburbs. It's game four of four between the Melbourne Aces and the Canberra Cavalry. Hi, everyone. Live from the Aces All-Star Bar here at Melbourne Ballpark, I'm Nick Batters alongside Ed Wyatt. And Ed, the Aces have won four straight games against the Cavalry, including three this weekend, a chance this afternoon to make it a series sweep. Yeah, that would be sensational, Nick. We've seen three entertaining games. We expect another one now. We don't know what the postseason's going to look like yeah. uh, in this sort of moving, fluid season, yeah. but I can tell you a sweep here would be great for the Aces' momentum as they head towards the conclusion of the year. It's a battle of South Pals on the mound. Canberra sending Frank Gailey to the bump. The Aces have Dan McGraw get in the start. It's Sunday afternoon, matinee baseball from Melbourne Ballpark. Lineups, first pitch, nine innings of baseball coming right up. Beardsley has won two. Swung on and missed strike three. Tyler Beardsley punches out two in the first and strands the runner on to end the top half. No score. Aces, their first at bats coming up in the bottom of the first. Beardsley's 2 2. Pushed out to center. Wait, Galen on the run makes the grab. Really fine play from the center fielder on the off speed pitch. Swing and a miss. Swung and a bad pitch. That gets Beardsley out of the inning. Swing and a miss. Fooled him on a breaking ball. Really good pitch. Outside corner. He's gone. He got the hat trick. How about that? Strikes out the side. Sixth strikeout of the night. Oh, that's hit well. That's hit very well. That's out of here. Kyle Perkins puts the aces on the board with a solo two-out shot. The ace is a one-nothing lead. Boom, and there it is. That was gone the minute. Canberra tied things up, got right back into the game. Swing and a miss, got him. What did I say, Nick? How big would a strikeout be? Count is 1-1. That's lined into right field. Can't make the play, and that's going to score one run for sure. Big Dell crosses the line. Delman it, Young. 2 nothing. Great hit. A one pitch. Misses outside. Runner going. Won't be a throw. Jack Berry. Look at the wheels. <laughs> Ready on left to the 0-2. In called strike three. Oh. Really good pitch by Leftwich. One gone in the eight. This is .com.au. Your tickets. Hints the name. Got Swing it. a miss. Strike three. John Kennedy comes in. Strands the runner on first. Getting ready to hit. Canberra's rallied the last two games in the ninth. Just falling short. And there's a strikeout again for Kennedy. Two in a row. Got him. Three strikeouts in a row. There's a pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. Kennedy. What an effort from the big left-hander. And a heck of a ball game tonight. Hello and welcome to Melbourne Ballpark on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's the Melbourne Aces and the Canberra Cavalry in the fourth game of a four-game set. Aces have won the first three. I'm Ed Wyatt alongside my partner, Nick Batters. And you can see the two managers, Alan D. Sam Miguel of the Melbourne Aces and Keith Ward of the Canberra Cavalry handing in their lineups as this game is about to get underway. Nick, beautiful day for baseball. We keep saying that, beautiful night. Today we get to say beautiful day. Day. The baseball gods have been in our favor all season long, it feels like. There have been some days where we thought it was going to rain, and then the rain stayed away. And then now we have just nice blue skies. See, yeah, they're enjoying the game. It's nice and sunny. A couple of cold ones. No better way to spend an afternoon, really, than, than out in the ballpark. Aces hoping for a sweep. Yeah, absolutely right, Nick. It's been a uh, it's been a sensational uh, 
series between these two teams. Maybe not if you're a camp or a cavalry fan because he haven't been on the winning side of it. But um, for the Aces, chance to really build some momentum as we talked about in the pregame as we head towards, well, an unknown quantity of a postseason. But obviously the more wins you pile up, the more of an opportunity you've got. We take a look at the Melbourne Aces starting lineup. Not too dissimilar from what we've seen the rest of the series. Again, it's the shortstop Gift and Gope, the electric South African at the top of the order. Daryl George, he'll be shaving his afro after today's game on the field. I'll have that for you immediately following the conclusion of the game. He bats second, playing third base. Blake Galen in his normal spot, center field. He's batting third. And in fourth, the cleanup hitter, the designated hitter, Big Delman Young. 11 runs batted in, a 449 average. He's been ridiculous this he season. Has been. Dame McTomshe hits fifth, the right fielder hitting 308 this season. He's the lead with five home runs. Jack Berry, how good has he been through the first three games of this series, batting sixth and playing first base. Jake Romanski back in the lineup after a couple of days off. He's doing the catching, and he's batting seven. Hitting eight, it's the left fielder, Kyle Perkins, the former Canberra Cavalry catcher, now with Melbourne in the lineup again. And batting nine, it is the second baseman, Jared Cruz. Good to see Cruz back in the lineup. He was really good for the Aces last season. It's tough for him to get playing time this year, but good to see him. It is absolutely right, and we talked about this kind of opportunity that Alan D. San Miguel, the manager of the Aces, does have with so many players who can shift positions. Positions. Chris Burke can play left field and catch, um, and uh, Jared Cruz can play any number of positions, infield and outfield, but you're right. Great to see him get a start. He was an integral part of the championship winning team last year. But you're right, this is uh, a wealth of talent, particularly in the infield, Nick. No, it's a really stacked infield. Perkins, Galen, Tom Shea in the outfield, that infield, George and Gope, Cruz and Barry with Romanski behind the plate. And this is an Aces team that's been pretty good fielding-wise this season. have only made 11 errors for the first 15 games of the season. A 978 fielding percentage. We're going to step away from the National Anthem when we come back. First pitch from Melbourne Ballpark. The Aces in the Camber Cavalry, fourth of this four-game series. Really a picture-perfect day for baseball. Ed White, let's take a look at the keys to the game. Well, we got uh, getting to Gailey early. So for the Aces, we know when the Aces score first, they uh, tend to win. So you want to get to the Camber pitcher as early as you can. Uh, McGraw, who's on the mound, Dan McGraw for the Aces. Limit the walks. Yeah, he's he's walked seven in nine and two-thirds innings, and oftentimes those are the runners coming around to yep. score. If he wants to keep Camber off the board, he's going to have to limit those. And the last one I love, Daryl George to dominate. Then the fro will go. We'll be talking about that throughout the afternoon. But at the end of this game, those luscious locks of his, that phenomenal fro is going to be shaved off for charity raised over ten thousand dollars for cancer council victoria actually got up to twenty thousand today with Did the donation really? from from jet couriers oh and the my fantastic goodness. folks there there you go fantastic news wow jay kermanski behind the plate he is the battery mate for the melbourne aces starting pitcher that's dan mcgraw the former boston red sox prospect actually the two of them 
both former Boston Red Sox prospects. Mm. It's always good to watch Dan McGraw. He's a guy who's done very, very well in the States. Always great to see him back here pitching for the Aces. Camber's going to go that same batting lineup they had last night with one exception, Nick, at the number seven spot. Chavez Young, who's been injured, the Toronto Blue Jays prospect. And there is the $21,607 raised by Daryl George. Last game he will play with that haircut. So good. Really great to see the money come to a good cause. See the thermometer always That's great. Go, go all the way to the top. Wonderful from Jet Couriers, obviously. He's been a big, big supporter of this baseball club. 106 p.m., 21 degrees, and away we go from Melbourne Ballpark as Tucker Nathans takes a ball low from Dan McGraw. And we're underway this comfortable Sunday afternoon, really per picture perfect. McGraw the one out. Big swing and a miss. Nathans, even one, and one. Uh, one for four in yesterday's game, double. Dan McGraw, he struggled a bit this season, nine and two-thirds innings. He's allowed nine runs, taken two losses, that ERA 838. The last time he was at Melbourne Ballpark, he pitched very well. That was against the Perth Heat yes. a couple of weekends ago. And you saw that walk count there, as we talked about, important to limit those walks. Don't let Canberra get on base. Two balls, a strike. Cracked out to center. Galen has a beat on it. Makes the grab. One gone. Much gentler wind blowing today, and it leaves them more familiar uh, left to right here in the ballpark after a couple days of right to left. It saw some left center field home runs, five of them the other night. So With that, the wind blowing in as well. Yes, and in, in into the La right. Last Correct. couple of nights yep. it was blowing out. Yep. So now it's the center fielder, Sabad Taylor, one of a couple of Blue Jays prospects in the lineup this afternoon for Canberra. Hitting 227 this season. Has spent time at both second base and in center field. And the two, three, four, and five, five and six hitters, Nick, between them eight strikeouts in yesterday's game. So they'll want to be uh, getting on base if they can because uh, that really limited them. They left a lot of runners on base yesterday, Camber. Count is even one and one. McGrada Taylor kicks and fires. To the right, Cruz battling the sun, calls for it, two away. Very good start. Two down, camera, and now batting shortstop, Mikey Reynolds. Mikey Reynolds, now he was one for four yesterday, also a couple of strikeouts. Superb fielder, Mikey Reynolds. He really is so slick at shortstop. Two home runs, eight runs batted in this season. See some of the crowd enjoying a cold drink on a nice warm day. Again out to center field. Galen and Perkins converge in left center. Galen, the center fielder, calls it off and makes the grab. A quick one, two, three. Top of the first inning for Dan McGraw and the Melbourne Aces. Aces trying to get those bats working. We're going to head to the bottom of the first from Melbourne Ballpark. It's our great low prices that make the difference. In our end of summer Aloha clearance sale, save from 30% up to 50% off our range of blinds, shutters and awnings. You Blinds Australia, more value for you.
Run up with the first inning, no score. Melbourne Aces and Canberra Cavalry. Nick and Ed, really glad to spend the afternoon at the ballpark with you. Frank Gailey on the mound. He's making his fourth start of the season for the Canberra Cavalry. 1-0 and in ERA exactly at three. He's pitched 18 innings and has 15 strikeouts, though his walks and hits a little high. That equates to a 1.61 whip walks and hits per innings pitched. Big left-hander. Facing Gift and Gope. And Gope, Daryl, George, Blake, Galen, one, two, three. And slings the first pitch in low to Ngope, 1 0, hitting just 182 this season. Got off to a little bit of a slow start. Has been great in the field for the Aces. A couple of strikeouts yesterday, 0 for 4. So it would be great to get him untracked. He and Blake Galen really need to get untracked to help out this Aces. Squad, but tell you what, a lot of other guys are hitting. And Gope ahead in the count, two balls and one strike. Gailey, long time face in the Australian Baseball League. It's 2 1. Make it 3 and 1. From the first base side, big swing and a miss from Ngope on the off-speed pitch. Three and two. Daly, his fourth season in Canberra with the Cavalry. And he walks, gift Ngope to begin the top of the first inning. Ngope draws the count full. He's headed down to first. Does lead the league, uh, lead the aces in walks? Does he, does, he not? Yes. Yeah. Specifically, I guess I should I should count that walk as well. That's gives tenth walk. Now it's Daryl George. Not the way you want to start a game against these aces if you're Frank Gailey. Free pass to Ngope, and here comes George. He's stolen two bases in three attempts this season. Gets away from Robbie Perkins, and Gope trots down to second. There you go. Gope moves over to second base. George should in an impressive 349 this season with a home run and six runs batted in. We take another look. This is going to be a tough game for Canberra, Nick. They've, they've lost three. They've been very competitive. It's the away day. They head home. I think this is going to be a tough ask for them here. And they're off to a very slow start. Runner in scoring position for George. Heading the count 2-0. Daryl, Melbourne's all-time games played leader, also spent some time in the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Played baseball out in Japan for a few years, including one in Nippon Professional Baseball, the big league out there. Big swing and a miss. Good pitch. Two and one. Came back with a good fastball. Challenged him with that fastball. He did. 86 miles an hour. The two one. Gailey misses outside three and one. He's gotten to three ball counts on each of the first two aces hitters. Dangerous count here against George. You come come in with something a little too good. He's gonna punish you. Gailey is three one. Off the end of the bat. Foul. And another full count, three balls and two strikes. The rest of the defense, by the way, behind Frank Gailey. It's James Trevanian, Samad Taylor, Tucker Nathans left right in the outfield. Just off the end of the bat. Jordan Young, Mikey Reynolds, Cam Warner, Zach Wilson, third to first around the infield. Robbie Perkins, we mentioned, behind home plate. 
doing the catching. So the count full, three balls, two strikes. Runner on second with no outs here in the bottom of the first. A scoreless ball game. Matinee baseball from Melbourne Ballpark. The 3-2. Outside ball four. Frank Gailey back-to-back -back walks to begin the bottom of the first. You don't need a lecture from me, Nick. But that is not an ideal start. You walk the first two batters. Now you got Blake Galen, Delman Young, Dame McTomshay, and Jack Barry coming up. That's a dangerous crew. Now it's Blake Galen. He settles into the box to Whitney Houston, hitting 268 this season. <laughs> two home runs, nine runs batted in. That has to be one of the top walk up songs in the team, right? Very quirky. Gets away from Perkins. Both runners will move up. How about that? Very sloppy start here, Nick, for Camber. And I don't want to sound like I'm piling on the cavalry, but this is just, you know. It has Keith, to be frustrating it, it, for Frank Daly exactly. and Keith Ward. Yep, absolutely. For the Aces, however, as we mentioned, their record when they score first is extraordinary. Up to 8-2. and two. Mm. Two wild pitches here in the first inning for Frank Gailey. Behind of the count, 1-0. Galen rips it foul. Gailey versus Galen. <laughs> I remember that from last time. One and one. Yeah, I think I got that wrong once last time. It's a big bat bat for Blake Galen. Over three yesterday, he's really been battling at the plate. He's hitting it hard, but sort of hitting it at people. So real opportunity here maybe. Snap out of that little slump. A 35-year-old native of California. Baseball lifer. One of the best the Atlantic League has ever seen in the United States. Out to right. Nathans makes the grab, and Gope is tagging from third. No, he and George will put on the brakes and return to their respective bases. A good throw from Tucker Nathans. That was, that's a great result for Frank Gailey. Runners remain where they are. It wasn't hit deep enough to allow Ngope, even with his speed, to score. And that was a very nice throw from Tucker Nathans. Just to sort of remind the Aces, maybe. And we saw Taylor's great throw last night. Those strong throws from the outfield make a difference. Now mm. it's Delman Young, his batting average up to 449 through the first 15 games of this season. There's that first pitch swing again. Just a reminder, please do not come onto the playing surface to retrieve foul balls. Has 11 runs batted in this year. Doesn't have a home run yet, but that's okay because it's been a, a whole lot of singles. <laughs> Scored eight runs as well, 449. Video game numbers right there. Yeah, sure. Delman's are. learned to play MLB The Show, apparently. <laughs> Out to left center. That'll drop. And Gope scores. George headed home. 2-0 aces in the first. Uh, it's just extraordinary, Nick. I'm just running out of things to say. He just does it every time. It's that single to left center field, just like clockwork. What a start. Delman Young, he has now 23 hits this season. It, you're not going to believe it, Ed. 18 of those have been singles. <laughs> Just Delman, the sweet stroke into left center. I just see it every night. Give him 13 runs batted in on the season. Now it's the dangerous Damick Tomshay. So the two walks come back to bite Frank Gailey as Delman Young drives him in with a single. He made the key to the game that Dan McGraw needed to limit the walks, but Frank Gailey does as well. Correct. Tom Shea even in the count, one and one. He was two for four yesterday. He's hitting 308. He's on a bit of a tear. He's been really, really good for the Aces. Agreed. And if you think about all the hard-hit balls he had to start the season, he pokes it into right field. Two runners on with just one out in the first for Melbourne. But to that point, he was hitting the ball hard constantly through the first couple weeks of the season, but it was yeah. always finding a glove. And then those those hits started to land, and the batting average quickly shot up. And a great opportunity here for young Jack Barry, the 24-year-old, 
native of Queensland, steps in. Yep. Two runners on with just one out in the first. So Delman Young on second. Yeah, Tom talk, Shea on first. Talk about a guy on a tear, Jack Barry. A couple of home runs the other night. One for three yesterday. Five for ten to begin his season with the Aces. Gailey fooled him on that pitch. Also has two home runs, five runs driven in. Mm. And a stolen base. And some good plays in the field. Big man can do it all. He can. Bit of a guy, a sense of cult hero. Quickly becoming a fan favorite. Yep. Yo one. Big swing and a miss, 0-2. He didn't get to play at Melbourne Ballpark last season. He only played in three games, and those were all at the, the baseball park in Perth. Aces played the Heat to wrap up the season. Aces fans haven't seen him since early 2016. <laughs> well, it's made it, made it feel like home, that's for sure. So it's no balls and two strikes. Frank Gailey trying to get a big second out. The 0-2. Swung on and missed strike three. Jack Barry goes down on three pitches. Massive out right there for Gailey. Didn't look comfortable in any of those, did he, Barry? Just did not look comfortable. They look comfortable, though. Yeah, absolutely. Kick back, relax. Now it's Jay Kromansky back in the lineup. The catcher batting 216 on the season. He's recorded eight hits. Hasn't yet driven in a run. Has a couple of Ducks on the pond, chance to do that here. Young on second, Tom Shea on first. Romanski, we've mentioned a prospect in the Red Sox system for a long time. Blade with Dan McGraw in 2019, both in Portland and in Pawtucket. Red Sox AA and AAA affiliates. Back for a second season with the Aces. It was here a couple years ago. Good pitch doesn't miss by much. It's 2 0. Oh. Trying to hit that outside corner. Two balls, no strikes. Two runners on, two outs. Two runs in for the Aces in the first. Missed again on that outside corner. Frank Gailey having to labor quite a bit mm. here in the first inning. The pitch count climbing up quickly. Stands at 26. 3-0 the count to Romanski. Number seven hitter in the lineup. Three and one. Jake also spent some time at first base this season for the Aces before the arrival of Jack Barry, of course. Has experience playing a few different positions. Has also spent some time in left field. Blasted out to center. Taylor a beat on it. Back towards the warning track. A step in front. Makes the grab. Okay, inning over, but the Aces do score two runs. The two leadoff walks come back to bite Frank Gailey as Delman Young drives them in with a single. Melbourne leads 2-0. We're going to head to the second from Melbourne Ballpark. Nick and Ed, catch you in a bit. There's an unseen thread woven into the fabric of all Australian homes. It's a way of life. Sunkiss days, afternoon storms, and memories shared with those we love. It's messy, but you bet we make it work. In the end, it's the simple things that make an Australian home home. And what did the trick then? It still does the job now. Hills, Australia's trusted clothesline since 1945. Light and Easy doesn't make diet food. Instead, they create delicious, nutritious food for you to enjoy whilst improving your health and saving time. So, the secret to losing weight and being healthy is simply eating delicious food.
Top of the second inning from Melbourne Ballpark. Aces lead the Cavalry 2-0. Smiles all around, including up here in the booth. Nick and Ed hanging out with you on this Sunday afternoon. Dan McGraw, some run support here. Aces, a couple runs on a pair of walks, a pair of hits. And also Delman Young being Delman Young. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and it, again, though, one of those things we look at, Nick, two runs could have been far worse if you're Canberra. So they would be fortunate, I think, to get out of that with only giving up two runs. Four, five, and six for Canberra. Zach Wilson, Cam Warner, Robbie Perkins, McGraw, a one, two, three, and in in the first. Fires in a strike. Wilson, tough day or tough night yesterday. 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. Still hitting below 100. 0 9 8. So really battling at the plate. Does have a home run. He and Mikey Reynolds went back to back a yes. couple of nights ago against Gunnar Kynes. Behind of the count. 1 and 2. Rolled foul over towards Keith Ward. <laughs> we'll do it again one and two. A lot of admiration for him, Nick. It's a tough, tough situation with Canberra. They've certainly made a uh, series of it, despite the fact they're down three zip. They've played hard. They've been competitive. They've done it with a less than full strength squad sort of late, late notice with who they're going to play. George on the back end. Bobbles, throws, in time. How about that, Daryl George? Even with a little bit of a bobble. Comes up, we'll have a look at that. Sharply hit, which gave him a little bit of time to Regather in a very strong throw. Now it's Cam Warner, the second baseman, takes the calm strike. Dan McGraw pounding the strike zone early on. We said he would need to limit the walks, and he's done that. Stayed around the zone. Now even in the count, one and one. McGraw now ahead in the count on the big swing and miss. One and two. Warner had one of the three cavalry hits yesterday. It was one for four. And Canberra just couldn't scratch any runs across the plate. Out to left. Perkins. He has it. Two gone. Obviously, Kyle Perkins, a really good catcher defensively for the Aces. Yep. But it has been nice to have his glove in left field because he's also very, very proficient out there. Yeah, he's been good out there. Good to have a couple of guys you can rotate sort of with Burke and You've also got Romanski, so a lot of options behind the plate. Fouled into the parking lot, 0-1. Every bat in this, batter this inning, McGraw started off with the first pitch strike. Counts even 1-1. One and one. I was talking with Mick Warren about that mound repair last night. Yeah. He said the issue wasn't Morimondo wanted a certain way, but uh, Beardsley didn't want it to affect his sort of um, Interesting. scenario. So he said it was difficult to try and play off the two of them. Have you, have you parlayed that into <laughs> a, a gardening show that you can host yet? I have not. And Gope can't get there into left field. Canberra has its first hit of the game. Good effort by the shortstop and Gope. Robbie Perkins as Canberra's first hit. 
Go play down. I thought for a minute he might have been injured, but I think he was just frustrated that he didn't get it. It was a good effort. Hard hit ball. Here he is, our man. Now it's Chavez Young. First action we've seen. Designated hitter for Canberra. McGraw, good pickoff, move over to first. Chavez Young, 23-year-old, born in the Bahamas. Did attend high school in Georgia, drafted by the Blue Jays in 2016. Four seasons in the Blue Jays system, high A Dunedin in 2019. Stole 24 bases. Rolled over, and Gope on to first. Barry applies the tag. The ball bounces out of his glove. Perkins up to third. Runners on the corners with two outs. Young's going to get second base here too as well, Nick. An awkward play. So you are right. Chavez Young heading down to second. He took one out bat a couple of weeks ago. Actually, that was on Boxing Day, the 26th, when the Aces came to Canberra. Del was dealing with an injury the last yep. last few weeks, so he had to leave the game after just that one at bat. So Perkins on third, Young on second. Just a strange play, that one. It, it should have been an easy final out. I guess that's, is that a throwing error, Nick? Has that been given to Barry? Or to hasn't hasn't been scored yet. Yeah. That's, that's tough. Now it's Jordan Young, the Aces signee. Has been Camber's third baseman all weekend. Now even in the count one and one, and he's made good plays over at third base. It's been fun to watch him get some playing time in this series. Getting more and more confident would appear as the games go on. The infield throws have been an issue for the Aces. Plenty of fielding, no fielding issues. It's been the throwing issues more than anything. It is a error on Ngope. Yep. McGraw's one one. This is high two and one. Now, if there is any good news that comes from this, if a run scores, it would be unearned because the error was made with two outs in the inning. Mm. So any runs that score in this inning are not affecting Dan McGraw's earned run average, his ERA. 2-1. Young, a patient eye, ahead in the count, 3-1. and one. Yeah, good at bat. Three one. Jam shot to the right side. Cruz over to first. Inning over. Dan McGraw escapes trouble. Getting Jordan Young to ground out. A single and error, but no damage done by the Canberra Cavalry. Melbourne Aces are trying to add on as we head to the bottom of the second. It's our great low prices that make the difference, especially during our once-a-year stock take sale. For two weeks only, all products are half price. Yes, half price. You Blinds Australia, more value for you. Just a reminder to all our young fans out there, please do not scale any fences, whether it's to catch or retrieve a foul ball, please do not scale any fences, whether that's one of the playing arena or inside the whole ball park. So please, our young fans, stay off those fences. 
Dan McGraw escapes trouble in the second. We head to the bottom half. Frank Gailey out to continue his afternoon. Melbourne Aces sent seven batters to the plate in the first and then scored a couple of runs on a pair of walks, a pair of singles. And it's eight, nine, and one near the bottom of the second. Kyle Perkins, Jared Cruz, and Gift and Gope against the lefty Gailey. Kyle Perkins with the home run yesterday. It's hard to hit a round tripper as we've seen in this series. Really smacked it up the left center field. In for a strike. These two guys, Gailey and Perkins, familiar with each other, teammates mm. the last three seasons in yep. Canberra. Good pitch inside. 0-2. Oh there is Perkins, 225, one home run, six RBI. Good eye outside. One and two. Ed, how about this? Adelaide Giants beat the Brisbane Bandits three to. They're playing a doubleheader today in Adelaide. Giants win three two over the Bandits. Their third walk off of the season already. Wow. Change their name. Adelaide walk offs. Two balls, two strikes on Perkins. No outs here in the bottom of the second. Pokes it foul. We'll do it once more. Perkins, we've seen him primarily split time between catching and left field. And he's also made brief appearances in right field on the road in Canberra. And he works the count back full. Three uh, balls and two strikes. Game on a much slower pace, Nick, than the other three, I would say, that we've seen. Gailey, a bit of a slow worker, and he's worked some full counts, and there's his third walk of the night. So he allowed walks to the first two batters in the first, and then Kyle Perkins leads off the second with a walk. Ed, quick one for you. Uh, want to guess if the Giants walked off of the Bandits? What's the that? bases loaded walk in the bottom right. of the eighth inning. <laughs> Grant Little drew a walk. Oh, it's the so worst. Adelaide looking good early this Absolutely. season. Absolutely. We said it before, but the level of play across the board in the league this year, it's really stellar. They improved to 6-3 and three on the season. There was some concern, wasn't there, about the, the who was going to come in, what, what imports were going to be allowed and all that, but you're absolutely right. It's been superb. Right at the shortstop, Reynolds to second, Warner on to first. Stop me if you've heard this before. <laughs> Double play for the Aces. 22? 22 the Aces have grounded into. Wow. So Jared Cruz grounds into a double play. Perkins out at second. We're back to the top of the order for Gifting and Gope. Yeah, it's not the record you want. 22 double plays. So if we do a quick look through the ABL standings, Melbourne sits up top, 10 and 5, Adelaide in second, 6 and 3. Perth, 5 and 4, Sydney is still 1 and 1. And Gope up the middle, into center field, a base hit. There we go. Two out single from the shortstop. It's Daryl George. Yeah, so Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Sydney's 1 and 1, they sit fourth. Canberra, 4 and 8, hit, sit fifth, and Brisbane, 2 and 7 bottom of the ABL stand in St. Gope right back up the box into center. Really good piece of hitting right there. It was a great piece of hitting. Could be a lot of reliance on percentage this season, Nick, because of the imbalanced number of games. It's going to be fascinating to watch. And with that, you have to take into account Sydney. They've only played two yeah. games to this point. Yep. Whereas everyone else is around the nine-game mark. Yep. At least. Big. Swing to miss for Daryl George. Went to his knees. He was fooled badly on that. Good off-speed pitch from Gailey. You can see only 76 miles an hour. There's Ngope with good speed at first. In fact, Gailey takes a look at him, keeps him safe. So 
So Ngope is lead from first. A threat to run, no doubt. He's going. Pitch outside. Perkins doesn't have a throw. And Gope slides in safely his third stolen base of the season. Had a decent jump. Perkins bobbled it, had no throw. That was a good pitch outside. Mm, yeah. That's the, that's the pitch you want as a catcher. But it popped out of his glove and Gope sliding in safely. So it's a ball and a strike to DG. Georgie walked and scored in the first inning. And Gope going for third, down the middle, throw to third. It goes into left field. Gift and Gope is headed home. Ace is up, 3-0. Bad throw from Perkins. I, he, I think he, a good throw has it, I think, I think to so. be honest, Nick. But went way high into left field, and Ace is getting another one. Fortunate, right really. down the heart of the plate. Mm. George was taking all the way, and Gope up quickly. But it is one and two on George. So Gailey just needs one more strike to get out of the inning. Just no RBI chance for Daryl now. Over the shortstop, Reynolds, a base hit. Mikey Reynolds up the ladder. Couldn't get to it, a pair of two out singles. The aces aren't, aren't letting off. Ah, that's good, well hit, just Reynolds just couldn't get up high enough. So Ngope gets a hit. Time for Galen to sort of break through here with something. Flew out, flight out, I should say, to right field in the first. Takes a call to strike one. Lefty on lefty. Good pitch, just a little high. So three zero aces here in the second. George on first. Galen out to right. Nathan's back towards the wall. Off the base of the wall. George stops at third. Galen in the second with a two-out double. What did I tell you? Time for him to break out. Galen at second. Darryl towards the third into the plate. Gentlemen, yeah. Just missed a home run by uh, maybe a meter, would you say? Yeah, I think that's a good call. And Nathan's wasn't sure about that. You can see him going back and thought maybe he, I think maybe thought it was gone and then realized it was going to stay in the Hit park. Off the, it did. One of the outfield wall banners. Keith Ward out for a chat with Frank Gailey. And here's an interesting one. They could, it, you're, they're probably not going to do this, but you, there is a world where you could look at putting Delman Young on with an intentional walk. But you're doing that to come up to <laughs> probably the Aces' third best hitter at the moment, in Damon Tomshay, and a guy who's red hot. So it'll be interesting to see if that's the decision. Delman, obviously, the most dangerous hitter in the league. Certainly. And one swing of the bat and these two runs come in as, as we've seen throughout this series. So I'm I'm leaning towards maybe putting him on. And that's my call as a as a bench coach, but we'll see. That's what that conversation's likely about. What do we do with Delman Young here? Looks like they're gonna pitch to him. Two runners in scoring position, George on third, Galen on second. Delman's got to love this fact that they're going to pitch to him. In for a strike. Oof. Good first pitch from Galen. A one. Big swing and a miss. 0 oh and 2. Good stuff from Frank Galey. Perhaps the conversation with Keith Ward was, hey, just attack Delman Young. Yeah, that's why Keith Ward's a manager, and I'm not. <laughs> we'll see. The inning's not over yet. Two on, two out, a run home for the Aces in the second. Big swing and miss, strike three. Just three straight fastballs. Delman that? Young down easily. 
But the Aces do add a run. Gift and Gope singles, steals two bases, scores on an throwing error, does it all himself. Aces lead 3-0 as we head to the third. Recently, I've been working very closely with Light and Easy, and I'm going to fill you in on a little secret. They don't make diet food. Instead, they create nutritious and delicious food for you to enjoy to help manage your weight, improve your health, and also save you time. And that same great food can help minimize your chances of suffering many illnesses later in life. So, the secret to losing weight and being healthy is simply eating delicious food. Try Light and Easy for yourself. Bottom of the third. Top of the third inning from Melbourne Ballpark. Aces lead the Cavs 3-0 as Dan McGraw back out. He'll face 9-1-2. James Trevanian, Tucker Nathans, and Samad Taylor. Trevanian, the left fielder, in the lineup for the second straight night. Takes a call to strike one. 0-1. Oh Mentioned Trevanian, a local club player in Canberra. Was called out of the roster last weekend. Looked good. Now he's here in Melbourne. Right back up the middle, but it's Jared Cruz behind the second base bag. What a good play from Cruzy. Yeah, it wasn't hit as hard as it initially looked like when it went off the bat there for the um. So with one gone, it's back to the top of the order. Tucker Nathans, the left-handed hitting right fielder. Nathan's flew out to center field his first time up. Takes the ball. Aces up 3-0. Top of third. The one out. Slap foul to the left. Caps even one and one. A couple, couple games ago, Keith Ward made that change. Switch Tucker Nathan's and Mikey Reynolds. Yep. Third and first in the order. Just missed outside corner with that. Really close pitch. Mm, sure was. Pretty good crowd for Sunday night. McGraw. Big swing and a miss. Should mention four games again next weekend. But this will be a Friday through Monday series. Big swing. Wow. Overpower center. Mm. And weather's meant to be very nice next weekend as well. Looking forward to it. Mm. A little warm maybe in the booth next week. Counts full three and two. Do we have the we have the air con? Can we get that in here? <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> three balls, two strikes. One out here in the third inning. That one's sent out to right. Tom Shea. Measures up, makes the grab, Daniel two away. So Tucker Nathans flies out for the second time. Now it's the center fielder, Smod Taylor, with two outs. A shot of the Aces dug out there, just kind of watching that fly.
Taylor, he popped out to Cruz, the second baseman, for the second out of the first inning. McGraw behind, really want to know. Really comfortable afternoon at the ballpark. It is. Not too hot, not too cold. Nah, it's perfect. It was 21 degrees at first pitch. It's jumped up to 22 now. Well, something's going on here, Nick. We've got a convergence of, I don't know if McGraw's injured himself or I think he may have actually, yeah, he may have because that's immediate. This is physiotherapist yeah. Matt Hopkinson, yeah. manager Alan D. San Miguel. I mean, immediately, Hopkinson immediately ran out there and Peter Moreland's actually signaled to the bullpen. So I think McGraw may have potentially tweaked something. I don't know. Obviously, we don't know. Just interesting to see we'll let it play out but there's clearly some action commencing out in the bullpen Pete Moreland's got his right hand up and I think that's it for Dan McGraw Jack and Siando look at that and Josh Tolles both getting ready in the bullpen wow I'm trying to figure out it'll be Jack and Siando to come in uh, Dan McGraw leaves the game well, a really tough this break for the aces crazy so the uh, pitcher who will be coming in so now Jack Enciando, as he comes in, will have as much time as he needs to warm up because yep. he's exiting due to the injury. One of those things, too, Nick, as you know, pitching so much involves mechanics, motion. Um, it could be the slightest little tweak of something. He felt it and realized he can't go on. Again, we're not going to speculate, but clearly... There was something there. So Jack Enciondo came to the ballpark, sort of kicking back in there, and suddenly, <laughs> third inning, he's in. Ace is bullpen. You see Josh Tolles in the left starting to start to loosen up a little bit. You have Cameron Gibbons on the right. Let's get to know Jack Enciondo a little bit, shall we? Ed? We're yes. going to have some time here as he warms Let's do up. It. Yes. A really, really, really nice guy, Jack Enciando, is 23-year-old native of Melbourne. He's pitched six and a third innings this season. Enciando has. Right now, this is third appearance of the year. Five, six, eight ERA. Sorry, Nick. Six and, six and a third innings. Eight hits, five runs, four strikeouts, and only one walk. It's kind of a, a tough situation as a pitcher to have to... Yep come in. I mean, again, he has as much time as he needs to warm up, but not, not knowing or expecting if you're going to come in. Correct. But Enciando, he made his first appearance of the season in not the exact same situation, but if you flash back to opening night the 17th December in Sydney, Dan McGraw could only make it through an inning and a third. So Enciando came in, he pitched Four and a third innings, only allowed two earned runs while striking out three. And then we saw him pitch two innings for the Aces in the second game of the doubleheader. Uh, I guess that was a couple of weekends ago here at Melbourne Ballpark. So he's thrown six and a third innings, we mentioned. In his fourth season with the Aces, this is 21st career appearances. Made eight starts two seasons ago for the Aces, the 2018-19 season. Yep. And that was that was a really cool story because he was he pitched six games a season before. Aces need a starter early on in the... Yep. I, I, I believe, were, were you broadcasting that game? I think we were, yeah. I believe I was. He, Aces are playing the Cavalry at yeah. the start of the season. Yep. And uh, Jack Enciando comes in on a Sunday afternoon, twirls a beautiful, yeah. beautiful game. Pitched two seasons at Hill College in Texas. Oh, hi there, Josh Tolles. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Enciando, he's someone that has represented Australia on the national stage, not the not the national team, but the U18 Baseball World Cup in Japan in 2015 
and in 2018 the U23 Baseball World Cup in Colombia. Pitched for Australia in both of those. And actually that, that U23 World Cup, kind of cool. He, uh, Jeremy Young, Aces pitcher yeah. who, who's been pitching for, for Canberra, got the win over a, in a 4-3 victory of the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic, a big, big Power. powerhouse Absolutely. for baseball. And Australia beat them, the U23. I mean, look, look at this. We'll talk about that. The, the first base picnic area. That is magnificent, isn't it? Pizza, ice cream, snacks, you name it. Beautiful day. We see the ballpark. And as you mentioned, Nick Enciando does get as much time as he needs because he was not warming up in the bullpen, sort of an emergency uh, with an injury. And now an update, Nick, on the... Daryl George, the fro must go tally. 21 660 so $21,000 raised for the Cancer Council of Victoria. And at the end of this game, that fro, that hair on Daryl George will be shaved off. Nick Batters will be doing a play-by-play of the haircut. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll head down to the field, talk talk with Georgie, find out you know, the story behind it, because it's a it's a cool story, so yeah. we'll, we'll hear a little bit from that. Yep. Um, if you have any questions for Daryl, I guess we can we can take some questions, because I'll be I'll be asking him some casual questions. Sure. We'll probably talk about the walk-up song while he's getting his haircut. Yes. If you have questions for his barber, maybe I, maybe I can ask one of those, too. I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything for Daryl George's barber? I'd like to see... After he shaves Daryl's head, I'd like to see him attack yours, Nick. I don't what know do about think? that. What do you think? We get some I fun. I just got a haircut a couple going. weeks ago. Yeah, but I, Is it too long for you already? Not, it looks great. I'm just thinking you're going to get on board, join the party. <laughs> you're going to come down as well? No. And to be honest with you, Nick, you know, you're on TV. you got to – people expect that Nick Batters look. They don't want to see you come out there with a shaved head. So I think you can escape it this time. But look at that. 21,660. Started, what, 5,000 was the goal? Yeah. Or 2,500. 2,500 was the goal. And look at that now. Over 20,000. This is on the, on the video board at Melbourne Ballpark. So there it is. Fantastic <laughs> It can't be an easy thing to cut all that hair. I'm, I'm talking for the barber, right? I. We were actually discussing that here in the uh, in the booth before you came up, the uh, Andrew and the crew, and how we would do it, and maybe some scissors to start before the the. Um, well, that's what clippers. I was thinking. Yeah. Our, um, our our good friends at Cyclone um, donated a thousand dollars a few days ago, and they said we'll add an extra five hundred if you use Cyclone shears to cut your hair. <laughs> So I was wondering if, if, if that could happen, if they could, if they could do the just cut off the, the the main part of the hair with the cyclone shears, get an extra 500. I like it. Nice <laughs> nice afternoon up in the party deck on the first base side. Yep. Really good to have that. Imagine without that shade structure, you get really hot up there. Yep. Makes a big difference. See some crowd fans waving here as we get close to restarting this with Jack Inciando filling in for Dan McGraw who left with an apparent injury well I can't say for sure if we'll get an update if we do have an update that we can pass yeah. along we'll make sure to do that otherwise we'll focus on on the game that's going on Jack Inciando I think you're right but to that point that I was I was making earlier a pit, Australia beat the Dominican Republic 4-3 to three behind a great start from Jeremy Young. Jack Enciano closed out that game. There we go. So we, Sorry, Nick. I was saying we're going to trying to remember where we were. It's, yeah, Samad Taylor uh, yeah. counts 1-0. With two outs. Jack Enciano is someone with the ability to go long if the Aces need him to. In for a strike. 1-1. One one. Good start. Good pitch there, and Siando ahead, one and two. Outfield, infield, straight up, and Siando, his socks high, the one two. This is inside, two and two. So Ed Wyatt, two two balls, two strikes. Free ice cream if, if Jack oh. Enciano gets the strikeout here. No pressure, right? Coming to the game, free ice cream on the line. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. Just misses, oh. counts full. A lot of folks riding that one <laughs> just on the outside corner. Bounce 
boxes in front of home plate. And see on to a walk. That'll bring Mikey Reynolds to the plate. And started out so well, way ahead of Taylor. I mean, speedster now on the base paths, got to be aware of Taylor. So Taylor with speed on first base. It's Mikey Reynolds flight out to center to end the first inning. Runner going, pitches a strike, throw to second, not quite in time. Good throw from per, from Romanski, I should say, just a little low, though. Yeah, it was a good throw, but as you mentioned, Taylor does have that good speed and puts himself in scoring position. You see the head first slide, he's in pretty easily. Although he almost slid over the bag the way we saw the other night. Foul back to the screen. I went to. We have a camera down there. Watch out, Mikey. Once again, two strikes on the hitter. Here we go. Oh. Uh, that was too close for comfort. No balls, two strikes. Two outs. Free ice cream on the line, Enciando's 0-2. Pop to the right. Cruz makes the grab, and the inning is over. So that two-out walk doesn't hurt Jack Enciando. He comes in for Dan McGraw and finishes off the Canberra Cavalry in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. And a foul ball almost breaks the camera. We head to the bottom of the third. Aces lead 3-0. Live from Melbourne Ballpark. Bottom of the third inning, Aces lead the Cavalry 3-0. New pitcher on the mound, it is Dean Stoke. A really great story. Pitched the Thursday night game for the Cavalry local club player in Canberra. Seven innings, just allowed one run with five strikeouts. Picked up the win in his ABL debut. That was second appearance for the Cavalry. Looks like he'll be asked to eat some innings. Taking over for Frank Gailey in the third. Kaylee just wasn't really sharp this afternoon. It's an interesting one, Nick, isn't it? We start with Frank Gailey v. Dan McGraw starting 
And now we've got a couple of guys, Stoka and Inciana, who are, as you say, going to be expected to take up, I would think, three or four innings. I'm going to throw this out there because the pace of the game is kind of clipping along slowly here. Uh, in order for Canberra to be able to catch their flight, no new inning will be able to start after 3.40. Yep. Um, there's a 4.15 curfew time, 4.05 time the game has to end so we're gonna see how this this afternoon goes yeah you're right it's a very good um, very good thought it has been very slow and also had that uh, uh, big warm-up period for Enciando so we'll keep an eye on that keep you updated as we get closer Stokas 3-1 Tom Shea to Reynolds Zach Wilson digs it out at first one gun Characteristic low throw there from Reynolds. Nice scoop by Wilson. Stoka now face Jack Barry. And Barry didn't look good in that first inning against Gay Gailey. So might relish the opportunity to test down a new pitcher here. Stoka, 39 years old. I believe the, right? the stat that I read was that he was the oldest debutant in the history of the, <laughs> the relaunched Australian Baseball League. Wow. Good Bam. pitch. Looks at a strike. Really good pitch. So Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Dean Stoker. Big weekend for the older, older athletes. Elite company. Speaking of that, guy walks by with a Tom Brady jersey. How about that for timing? A ball and a strike. Big swing and a miss from Barry. One and two. Delman Young, can we throw his name in the circle? Yeah, absolutely. He's been good this weekend. A couple of three hit games. Right. Yep. Jack Barry, he's only 24. Feels a long life, good career in front of him. Sharply hit. Right at the shortstop Reynolds. From the outfield grass. <laughs> Easy over to first. Big loop wow. throw there from Reynolds. <laughs> Very casual, wasn't it? Wilson didn't even have to move. Back-to-back -to -back ground outs to Mikey Reynolds. Mm. And to the catcher, Jake Romanski. Fly out to end a long first inning. Pummel down the right side into the trees down that right field line. I oh, one Romanski, he's, we've talked about it on and off over the course of this season, but a few independent professional leagues in the States were operating. He got to play in one of them. It was the, the Constellation Energy League just in, in Sugarland, Texas, a suburb of Houston. He played for the Sugarland Skeeters team there. Hit 351 over 21 games. Interesting to see. It take a lot to figure this out, but someone will eventually do it. The guys that got to play this year, how they do next year when things sort of return That'd to normal to versus see. the guys who haven't been able to play at all. And there, there haven't been too many of them. I know Jared no. Walker, of, of formerly the Auckland to Atari, now the Brisbane Bandits, he had a chance to play in that league. Romanski swings and misses the ball, gets away from Perkins, fires it down to first, and it's a 1 2 3 third inning for Dean Stoka. Yeah, about that. Makes easy work of the Melbourne Aces. Aces lead 3 0. We're going to head to the fourth from Melbourne Ballpark. Nick and Ed coming back at you in a moment.
you're taking part in the chase for the Black Greyhound race, please make your way down to the first base gate straight away. If you're taking part in the chase for the Black Greyhound race, make your way down to the first base gate. Welcome back to Melbourne Ballpark. Kids here having a very good time, as are the Melbourne Aces with a 3-0 lead as we head to the top of the fourth inning. The game that has seen both starters out of the game. Dan McGraw, some sort of injury in the last inning, has been replaced by Jack Enciando for the Aces. Camper starter Frank Gailey departed in... 39-year-old Dean Stoka has filled in. Here are the standings Nick alluded to earlier. Aces leading 10 wins, 5 losses. You can see pretty imbalanced schedule with some of those teams, Sydney in particular. But at the moment, Aces on top. And Siano to Zach Wilson who hits it deep to right field. A little bit of leap there from Tom Shea, but one away. It was a good grab, and I feel Tom Shea had to range a little further back than I think you may have expected. I think you're right, Nick. So Zach Wilson's down, Cam Warner, Robbie Perkins to follow here for the Camber Cavalry in the top of the fourth inning. That's a ball. Beautiful afternoon at the ballpark. Fouled away. One ball, one strike. Aces will be home again next weekend at this point. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Sunday game at 1 p.m. All three others at 7. Brisbane Bandits coming to town. That'll be fun. Yeah. Haven't seen them. You have when you were up there in the ABL bubble. I have not other than what I've seen on TV. Right down the middle. Good pitch. Two and two. Brisbane's a fun team. There's, I mean, you have a lot of Australian veterans on that team. Yep. But also some really fun, promising Brewers prospects on that team, along with Jared Walker, really good with Auckland last yep. year. Johnny Field, the major yep. leaguer back. There's a grounder to Cruz at second. Scoops it up. Fires to Barry at first. Two away. And, of course, our old friend Dave Nielsen will come to town. Dave and I go way back. One of the absolute superstars of the game, obviously, but also one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Super nice guy. It's good to see Dingo in yeah. Brisbane He's a last character. week. What a player he was. Here's Robbie Perkins, singled. His first time up. Top of four. Ace is up 3 nothing. I think he went around on that, no doubt about it. Strike one, one and one. Is that behind the catcher cam that we love? That Nick is so protective of? Check swing again. And that's also a strike. Look, it's expensive. I Cameras are expensive. I'm not critical, I'm just descriptive. You're very protective of that camera. Yeah, that's true. It's great to have it, by the way. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. That's free ice cream. As Perkins throws down, nice inning from Jack Enciondo. We're going to head to the bottom of the fourth inning. As we watch this strike out, here it is. Drops off the table. Strike three. We'll be back with the bottom of the fourth after this. Aces lead it. Three nothing. Hi. 
Football Club. Today I'm at the Premier Dealership Brighton Nissan. For over 20 years the team here have never missed the mark in selling and servicing new and used vehicles in Bayside and the surrounding region. You're invited to join the action and play with the great range of vehicles. So whether you're buying, selling or leasing, you can score big at Brighton Nissan where customers are always treated like winners. Don't pass on this season to find your new car. Come visit Brighton Nissan today and have a ball browsing the extensive range. 931 Nepean Highway, Bentley. Racing and it's the big fella on the inside getting the best of the start as they head around past Maverick and still out in front. There's a bit of a battle, there's a bit of a fight on for third, that's for sure. One, one, four and eight. Are your placings? One, four and eight. <laughs> Welcome back to Melbourne Ballpark. You can see the aftermath of the Greyhound race here where fans grab a cardboard Greyhound and race across the outfield. Fun day at the ballpark for pretty much everybody except maybe the Canberra Cavalry who trail 3-0 at the moment as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Both starting pitchers already out. And Dean Stoka, 39-year-old veteran. Veteran pitcher, I should say, not ABL veteran, because he's making his, I think his second appearance overall in the ABL. Ed Wyatt and Nick Batters with you. Quite a story, Dean Stoka, and he did look very impressive in that last inning. It's funny, there aren't many players in this league that are older than him, but there aren't also many who have fewer, less experience in this league than him. <laughs> That's a very good point. How about that? Kyle Perkins will lead it off for the Aces. He drew a walk his first time up. Aces up three zip. First pitch is a strike. Aces have five hits. Canberra just that one solitary hit. Kyle's brother Robin. Single in the second inning. Misses inside. One and one. It's been really great to have Kyle on the Aces this year. I know he, he's Huge. enjoyed a change of scenery, new pace. Yep. Really enjoyed playing for Allen D. San Miguel. That hit him. That hit him. He'll head down to first. Painful way to get on, but Perkins will head down to first. And Jared Cruz gets a chance. He just got away from Stoker. Fouled out of play down the first baseline. One strike on Jared Cruz. Hit into a double play his first time up. 22nd time the Aces have hit into a double play this season. That's fouled on a check swing. Watch out for gifting up in the on deck circle. Just about to say that. The on deck man. Gift had to do a little ducking. There's that check swing. Go pay. Had to duck out of the way. So no balls, two strikes on Jared Cruz. That's a ball, one and two. So the Aces, one of the few negative stat lines they have is that hit into double play record everything else is pretty solid runner on first no outs one two pitch to Cruz fouls that away again count remains one ball two strikes Stays alive again. 
Try it one more time. Good battle from Jared Cruz. For sure. Kind of a cliche I say a lot, but it's true. Mm. These aces hitters have been doing that. One-two pitch again. Looks at a called third strike. One away. A really good pitch just mm. right down the middle. Yep. Throws Cruz. Second strikeout for Dean Stoke. Back to the top of the order and shot stop for your number nice is Gift and Go Pay. So Gift and Go Pay now. Singled and scored. He scored two runs tonight, in fact. Walked and scored, singled and scored. Low ball one. In the bottom of the fourth inning. Slow, deliberate game here. Delayed a little bit by the McGraw injury. That misses, ball two. Should say apparent injury. We don't know for sure it's an injury. May have just been a precaution. But he did leave the game. Not often you see that both starting pitchers go yeah. less than yeah. three innings. McGraw was looking good. Daly wasn't bad by any means. No. And we talked about that a lot, Nick, didn't we, in this series, the need for the pitchers to try and get to that fifth, sixth, even seventh inning, but <laughs> certainly not today tonight or today. Three balls, no strikes. Sonny Gope, who leads the aces in walks. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Three and one. We see Gift and Gopa do that a lot. Swing mm. 3 0. It, it would do. Agree. <laughs> I'm not sure if Gopa actually thought that was a ball. Or whether he was just putting on a little act. Because Trying that, to will that. That easily existence. caught the outside corner. That was a strike all the way. Full count now. Three and two. <laughs> One out. <laughs> and he went. How about that? Dean Stoka fights back. Second strikeout in a row. First base umpire Stewart Howe made that call. Mm, yeah. Now that the nice the Aces, Daryl George. Three strikeouts for Stoka as Daryl George steps in. He, too, has been on base twice and scored twice. Like in Gope, a walk and then a single. Sky high in the left center. Taylor's in, now Drew's over towards center. Taylor makes the catch for the final out. So not a bad effort there from Dean Stoka after hitting the leadoff batter, gets two strikeouts and a fly out. We will move to the top of the fifth inning. Aces still lead Canberra 3-1 back after this. It's our great low prices that make the difference, especially during our once a year stock take sale. For two weeks only, all products are half price. Yes, half price. You Blinds Australia, more value for you.
Welcome back to Melbourne Ballpark. Get a look at the Canberra Cavalry. Coming to bat there on the losing end at the moment of a 3 nothing score as we head to the fifth inning. Fans enjoying their day at the ballpark. Ed Wyatt, Nick Batters with you. Melbourne Aces baseball powered by Sportscast Australia. See some fans out there in that. Got a Deuce on Bear sat right in the frame. The KBO's Deuce on Bears. Yeah, right. Not too often you see a KBO hat. No. Although, obviously, when so many sports were shut down, that was one league that got started again soon. You had a lot of people watching it. And, and the, the Deuce on Bears did come to Geelong back in back in February for their, their spring training and yep. the KBO challenge against Team Australia. So here's Chavez Young, the designated hitter, reached base on an error, throwing error. His first time up. Lined. Down the third baseline foul. Chavez Young, of course, the cavalry player who was in the broadcast booth for their intra squad game on Boxing Day. Called a Robbie Perkins Grand Slam. <laughs> That's grounded to Barry at first. He can't make the play. And for the second straight time, Chavez Young is on via an error. How about that? Yeah. About that. Wasn't especially hard hit at Barry. No. Just took a bad hop on him. Second error of the night for the day for the Aces. You're absolutely right. Just a bit of a slow roller. Brings up Jordan Young. Grounded out his first time out. Chavez Young, as we mentioned, definitely a threat on the base path. So he's just coming off an injury, Nick. So I, I, it will be interesting to see. I suspect he may not be running, but you never know. And this is outside. There's no doubt they're worried about him. 78 stolen bases across four minor league seasons. Both he and Samad Taylor, the two Blue Jays prospects sent to Canberra, both threats to run. 44 stolen bases Young had in 2018 with the Lansing Lugnuts in the Midwest League. Absolutely a threat. Pitch misses again outside. Two balls, no strikes. Jordan Young patient at the plate. Mm. Forcing Jack Enciando to throw him strikes. It's a moderate lead for Young over at first. See so they throw back to keep him honest, as they say. Two-o pitch. That's hit hard down the right field line, but will be foul. So. Two balls and a strike. And Jordan Young. Siando <laughs> working back in the count. Still has that run around first, though. It's high, ball three. Young doing his best to try and distract Enciando. And I mentioned this to you before. It's not often you see players that wear their hat underneath their helmet. Jordan Young is one of them. <laughs> You're right. So and he can just take off his helmet and go back into the field. Hmm. And that misses high and outside as well. So the first two batters are on. For the Cavalry here in the top of the fifth. Young reaches by error. Or Chavez Young by error. Jordan Young walks. And here comes James Trevanian now. He lined out to second base his first time up. It's right back up the box. But mm. 
I'm wondering if a bunt might be on here, Nick. Just a crazy thought. Camber did have, have Trevanian. This is a couple week. Uh, I guess this was last week. And in Camber, they had him bunting with the two strikes. It was in the, uh, in the 10th inning. Aces Cavalry went to extras in the Friday night game last week in Canberra. And, uh, you know, in the 10th inning, you start with a couple runners on base. Yep. And maybe you lay down the bunt. And uh, they had him trying to lay down the bunt even with two strikes. Right. Which you don't see very often. Yeah, you often. don't. No, you don't. So two men on, no outs. Trevanian at the plate. One ball, no strikes. Big breaking ball, and Enciano having a little bit of trouble throwing strikes here, Nick. And just as we say that, a little bit of limbering up in the Aces bullpen. And a visit to the mound from Jake Romanski. Who do we have? Josh Tolles is getting stretched out. Michalis is about to get there. Yep. Scott Mitchison. He's going to start stretching as well. Yep. So Cameron Gibbons on the ground. Brian, Brian Flynn. You suspect this up. might be a, you know, one inning apiece type thing for those guys. If I mean, piece it together. Can't go much for, yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. None of them, Mitch Ellis, Scott Mitchison, Cameron Gibbons, none of the three of them have thrown much this no. series. So they, they could all yep. at least put in another inning. That misses inside. So 3-0 and oh count. You know, I would suspect the... Bullpen activity would ratchet up a little bit more now if Enciando can't get Trevanian. That's a strike. Good pitch. Three balls and a strike. No outs. Two men on. Good thing is you, you have most of the bullpen available today. Yes. John Kennedy probably not after pitching in and two-thirds yeah. yesterday. Uh, Swing and lined. Foul down the... Right field line, and that's a good comeback there from Enciando to battle it back to three balls, two strikes. Maybe not Luke Leftwich. He threw 25 pitches yesterday. Yep. But other than that, Ellis, Anderson, Tolls, Mitchison, Gibbons, yep. probably all available. Aces wouldn't play again until Friday, so that's an extra day of rest. What, a, what an effort from Enciando. Comes back and gets Trevanian. One out. Tell you what, that's good pitching. On the top of the order now, Tucker Nathans. A couple of flyouts, center field and right field tonight. Siondo gets the signal from Romanski. Outside corner, strike one. Good first pitch strike there from yes. Jack Enciando. Back at the top of the order. This is his ninth batter face. Attack the strike zone. Lined it short, and Gope flicks to Cruz. Cruz over to first, double play. Inning over, pitcher's best friend. And that ends the rally. Camber gets a couple men on, but can't do anything about it as the Aces turn a double play to send us to the bottom of the fifth. Still, Aces three, Cavalry nothing. Wow. Big one. Yeah. <laughs> 
Great scenes at the ballpark today. In Melbourne's western suburbs, Aces 3, Canberra Cavalry nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Ed Wyatt, Nick Batters with you in this fourth game of a four-game series. The Aces have won the first three. Leading this one, I don't want to say comfortably, but they look They've pretty been sharp. in control. Yes, in all control. Game long. There's, there's never been a point where it's felt like Canberra has been a step in front of the Aces. Still only one hit for the Cavalry on the day. As Blake Galen steps in, doubled his last time up. It's one for two tonight. Dean Stoka now is. Third inning of work. Frank Gailey only went two, the starter. That's hit a mile high. Maybe playable by the catcher Perkins, and it is. One away. Mitch Ellis is warming up in the Aces bullpen. So perhaps he'll take over in the top of the sixth inning. Yep. Delman Young now. Singled and struck out. <laughs> Lined right up the middle as it takes a weird little bounce in the second baseman. Warner makes the play. It wasn't as hit as hard as it seemed off the bat, and then it bounced fortuitously right to Warner. And that's two down, just like that. Yeah, look at it here. It's pretty good off the bat. Well, it's going to get up the middle, but it takes that bounce right at Warner. He played it well. Two down. Quick uh, quick defensive change for you. Jack Middleton has entered the game for Canberra. He's, uh, he's in left field. He replaces Jordan Young in the lineup, though. James Trevanian has moved from left field to third base for the Cavalry. So, again, it's Middleton in left, and Trevanian moves from left to third. That's a quick strike on Tom Shea, who then hits a sharp one past Trevanian for a base hit, second of the night or the afternoon for Damon Tom Shea. That's what I've said all, all along. Damon Tom Shea hits the ball hard. Yep, sure does. Jack Barry now. Over for two tonight. Michelle is still warming up. Looks like he's getting hot. Should be ready to go for the sixth. First pitch on Barry is a ball. Still have about an hour until no new inning can start. So at this current pace, we should get at least seven, possibly eight. Yep. Maybe nine. In case you're not aware, that there is a bit of a, what is that, time limit or curfew, whatever you want to call it, because of a certain number of flights that these teams can catch to get back to their home cities. We saw it last time the Cavalry came to town. Game went eight innings. Yep. <laughs> one, one pitch. This is the outside corner. Actually called the strike, Actually, delayed, was, delayed I, strike call by Neil Medlin. I apologize, good catch. Did hit the outside corner. As a broadcaster, your preference is the umpire with the big strike call as opposed to the delayed or small one. Here's a pitch that gets past Perkins. Tom Shea rounds second, but he will stay there and he moves on. Real issue for Canberra today. I want to say that's the third wild pitch is, slash yeah. passed ball. So two and two is the count. Two outs, man on second. Let's see if Jack Barry can deliver something here. 
Runner going. Grounded to short. Reynolds up with it. Throws to first, and that will end the inning. So one hit, but no runs for the Melbourne Aces. And we'll head to top of the sixth inning. Aces still lead it. Three nothing. Welcome back. Beautiful Sunday afternoon for baseball here at Melbourne Ballpark. Ed Wyatt and Nick Batters with you as the Aces take a 3 nothing lead to the top of the sixth inning. And there has been a pitching change. Jack Enciando's work is done. And Mitch Ellis will take over in relief. Third pitcher of the afternoon. Dan McGraw started, had to leave with what looked like an apparent injury. Enciando then came in, but... Ace is still in control, 3 0, and still only one hit for Canberra that Robbie Perkins single in the second inning. Mitch Ellis. Mitch, he's had a tough season yep. so far. His first time solely focusing on being a pitcher for him. This is his sixth appearance. He's allowed six runs and five innings, nine hits, five walks. He has struck out five. Be a good opportunity for him here. As we look at some people enjoying their time on the party deck. Good opportunity for him to get back on track. Sunday afternoon game in Melbourne. Samad Taylor, Mikey Reynolds, Zach Wilson. Part of the order for the Canberra Cavalry here in the sixth. And as Nick mentioned, on the clock for about an hour for this game can't go any further so we'll keep you updated on that at this moment game seems to have picked up a little bit in terms of pace nick started pretty slowly and then was delayed of course with the uh replacement of mcgraw right about adding for jack and siando two and a third scoreless yep. walked a couple struck out a couple faced nine batters threw 34 pitches on 20 strikes Ellis, the third arm of the game. And you see Jack and Seattle right above the score, score bug, number 38. Now it's Mitch Ellis game. Samad Taylor flew out in the first, walked in the third, and stole a base. So Canberra want to try and get him on. First pitch from Ellis wide and outside. Ball one. Make sure you head to the Aces website or any of the social media pages for all the information about next week's games against Brisbane. It's fouled back out of play. Just a reminder, that is a Thursday, a Friday through Monday series. Yes. Normally we play Thursday through Sunday. This will be Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, Monday night. And Australia Day on Tuesday. Yes. So if you're not doing anything the night before Australia Day, come out to the ballpark. Finally, it's his home game of the regular season. Good pitch. Swing and a miss. 95 miles an hour. 
on that fastball from Mitch Ellis. That's the fastball that got him signed by the Kansas City <laughs> Royals <laughs> last right. year. Right. Came to the Aces as an infielder. <laughs> yep. Get him on the mound. He's sitting mid-90s with the fastball. Yeah. Get, get you on the Royals. That skied foul out of play. If you can throw a baseball 95, someone will find you, Nick. You see Someone the, uh, will find you. There was a there was a fan that hit. Uh, I think it was it was might have been ninety five somewhere around there on the, the the speed pitch game at Coors Field in, in Colorado at the Rockies game. <laughs> Oakland A's signed him. <laughs> now, to be fair, he had a background in baseball. He played college baseball. Still, he was actually training with a former A's pitcher in Arizona. Um, so it was it wasn't like this was just a random you, you blow from the grandstands yeah. that yeah. comes in rockets <laughs> off 95 but the ace did sign him he was he was actually released uh, over the summer one of many minor leaguers yeah. cut unfortunately but still a cool story right we'll get signed 2-2 two, two count lined in the left field that's going to drop for a single so the dangerous samad taylor is on again last time he stole a base only the second hit of the night for Canberra. Perkins singled in the second, so that's the first Canberra hit since the yeah. second inning one hour in the sixth. Yep. And here's Mikey Reynolds now, 0 for 2. But we know he has power. Canberra still within striking distance right now. Correct. Nope. Aces haven't been able to score since the second. And Ellis needs to buckle down and worry about Reynolds and not get too caught up with Taylor on first as that one flies. Out of play down the right field line. <laughs> Taylor with a decent lead at first, not too big as the fastball comes in. That's another 95 mile an hour. Strike. Overpowering, Oof. I would say. Yeah, when he can get that in its location, that is brutal to try and hit. 0 2 pitch now. <laughs> it's looped into right field. Jared Cruz makes a great play. Good to have that taller second baseman out there, Nick. Yeah. Jared Cruz <laughs> ranging back gets it done. Didn't have time to go to first, no. but that's okay. It was still a really good play. Michellis has his first out. Jammed Mikey Reynolds. Now you can see Jared Cruz. Nice athletic play there. So one away. Runner has to stay at first, obviously. And Zach Wilson now. He's over for 2. As we mentioned, having a pretty rough year. Still yet to get that average over 100. Strike one. Reminded me of it back in Seattle in the old days. Dave Valley, the catcher, was yep. hitting so badly. A, a, a local restaurant or bar was giving away well drinks at the price of his batting average. <laughs> so it was somewhere around $1.95. <laughs> Fouled out of play, strike two. Just down in the uh, very cheap well drinks. They call it Dave Valley Days. <laughs> he could get get a drink according to his batting average. I reckon he's a, he's an analyst for the MLB Network now. And a very serviceable States. catcher. He's, yeah. he, he was a very good catcher, part of those good Mariner teams, but he's just not a great hitter, and that was a bad year for him. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That's hit into center field. That'll drop for a hit. Galen is there. Taylor with his speed will easily make it to third. And we've got runners on the corners for Ca uh, Canberra. A well-executed hit and run there by the mm. Cavalry. Yep. Because Taylor was off on the pitch. It allowed him to get to third base. Now if, if that ball had hung up a little longer, Galen catches it, he's doubled off of first. But True. luckily for the Cavalry, yep. it drops. They have runners on the corners with just one out. And Cam Warner coming to the plate here there is one out where we are in a double play situation we are in the top of the sixth inning aces still leading three nothing but camber threatening
First pitch low, ball one. seen throughout the series. Canberra will not go away. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. Romanski was ready to throw down to third. Taylor getting a little far off. He third was. base bag. Yep. Count is one and one. One out. That was routinely hitting that 95 mile an hour mark. This is outside. Two balls and a strike, one out. Runners on the corners. Taylor at third, Wilson at first. That's inside, ball three. Three and one. I just as quickly as you said this game was clipping along, the pace has slowed down a little bit. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Is that the broadcaster's jinx? I think it might be. We've got some action in the bullpen out there, Nick. I think it might be Scott Mitchinson. 3-1 pitch. That's hit into right center field. Tom Shea over, he's going to make the catch. It'll be an easy tag and score for the speedy Taylor. So two outs, but one run is in. And that'll bring the tie and run to the plate for mm -hmm. Canberra. So two outs and a runner on first. <laughs> Zach Wilson as Robbie Perkins steps in. He singled in the second, struck out in the fourth. So it's a 3-1 ball game. Attempted breaking ball that didn't really break. Inside, ball one. Comes up and in. Fouled back. One and one. Ace is home next weekend to Brisbane. Just above the camera. <laughs> Thanks for being careful, Robbie. <laughs> the word out all the players the brisbane players for next week make sure you get the word out nick i'll have a chat with them this week <laughs> <laughs> one one is the count two outs good strike down the middle fastball at 94 miles an yep. hour from mitch ellis ellis ahead now one ball two strikes strike out here would end the inning Got him, outside corner, inning over. Cavalry get a couple of hits, and do get one run. This is still in the lead, as you look at that fastball from Ellis, just grabbing the outside corner. Bottom of the six coming up, Melvin still leading Canberra, 3-1. Not really still. It's okay. Recently I've been working very closely with Light and Easy and I'm going to fill you in on a little secret. They don't make diet food. 
Instead, they create nutritious and delicious food for you to enjoy to help manage your weight, improve your health and also save you time. And that same great food can help minimise your chances of suffering many illnesses later in life. So, the secret to losing weight and being healthy is simply eating delicious food. Try Light and Easy for yourself. The Melbourne Ball Park that's running the field, that will be coming up shortly. So if you're keen to run the Melbourne Ball Park, make your way down to the first base gate. Pitching change on the mound for Canberra is Stephen Kent. Welcome back to Melbourne Ball Park. Saturday or Sunday afternoon baseball. You can look Aces bullpen. Cameron Gibbons warming up. He is indeed. Ed Wyatt, Nick Batters with you. Aces lead at 3-1 in bottom of six. Let's hope Josh Tolles would come say hi again. Tolles, he come back. Come back. <laughs> He's been up and down constantly. There's that picnic food court area. All-star bar. Place to buy some pizza, coffee, ice cream. You name it. A bunch of kids lined up. You can see them over there, Nick, on the right side of the screen. Going to run, I think, between innings. And we do have a new pitcher. The veteran, Steve Kent, is on the mound now, replacing Dean Stoka, who we went three innings, only gave up one hit. But Steve Kent, the veteran lefty, is in. He will face Romanski, Perkins. In Cruz. It's his fifth appearance of the season. He struggled. Six runs he's given up in five innings. That's a 10.8 ERA. A whip of two. He's someone that's been around since the start. He has. With Indeed. Camber since the 2010-11 season. Just took the 2013 season off. <laughs> First pitch is a strike. Romanski. Second pitch is a strike. We spoke with Kent prior to the game uh, in the previous series. Uh, really nice guy, but also talked really insightfully about the season and how tough it was to sort of keep this thing going. But Such all, a unique season. They were all dedicated to it. Breaking ball misses. They were tough to manage. He wasn't complaining. He was just saying it was difficult and different, but they were all, all in on getting some, you know, getting onto the field and playing and being competitive. Look at that spin rate, Nick. Nearly 3,000. That one's fouled just over the party deck. So the major league, what was the number? The there? average 25? is 2,300. 23, right. So that's some serious spin rate. 31-21. Wow. <laughs> One ball and two strikes on Romanski. Swing and a miss. Good pitching from Stephen Kent off the bench. One away. How about Dean Stoker? Three innings, no yeah. runs, just a hit. Yeah. Didn't walk anyone, struck out three. 27 strikes on 39 pitches. Maybe someone Cabra needs to keep around a little while, eh? Kyle Perkins. Coming to bat, having a little chat with his brother behind the plate. Great little <laughs> Robbie interaction. Kyle. Yeah. Kyle's the older brother. Kyle's reached on a walk and hit by pitch. And that's fouled out of play. So he's been on base twice. Hasn't hit the ball. Box score shows him zero for zero, yeah, though. That's for right. Yeah. Donut for donut. <laughs> Kent delivers another strike. So 0 and 2 is the count. Talked about a kind of veteran of this league. Yep. This, pitch, this is 118th game pitched in the Australian Baseball League. Just absolutely remarkable. That one's looped down the third base, or first base line, just out of play. Thought that was going to stay in for a minute as Zach Wilson chased it, but as so often it does, hits that net on top of the all-star bar picnic area. And we'll do it again. No balls, two strikes. 
3-1. Melbourne Aces lead as we again look at the Aces bullpen. Looks like Cameron Gibbons has the seventh. Mm. That one is high from Kent. Ball one, one ball, two strikes. I'll note 113 games pitched entering the season ranked him eighth all time in the ABL in terms of games pitched since 2010. That's also high. And Steve Kent's everywhere on the leaderboards. Third in wins. Seventh in games started. Eighth in innings pitched. He's now up over 300 total innings in the Australian Baseball League. That's a mile high. Mikey Reynolds over just behind second base. Got a line on it. Makes the catch for the second out. So two down. And brings up Jared Cruz. He's had a good day in the field. Struggling a bit at the plate. Hit into a double play and was caught looking and a called third strike in the fourth. So he's 0 for 2 tonight. Kent also entered this season fourth all time in strikeouts. Ryan Searle, the all time strikeout leader in this league. Just between him and Kent, Brian Grenin, formerly of Canberra, and Craig Anderson of Sydney. Swing and a miss. That's a one and one count. Some great old names there from the early ABL, the second incarnation of the ABL. Kent delivers that as low. Ball two. Two balls and a strike on Jared Cruz. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Aces lead at 3-1. Just after 3 o'clock here in Melbourne. Got another 40 minutes, is it, Nick, to get this in? Is that what we said? For it, uh, no new inning can start after 3.40. 3.40, no new inning can start. So right now we're probably on track for an eight inning game. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. But we will keep you informed. 3-1 pitch. And Cruz manages to get himself a walk. So he's off to first as Kent. Miles' his first base runner. And Gift and Gope. Steps in, reached on a walk, singled. Scored two runs t today and struck out his last time up. Good pitch, strike one. And Gope shakes his head like he knew it. Ball misses. One and one. Sharp ground ball in the left field for a base hit. Gifting Gope with his second hit of the night. On base for the third time. Cruz moves over to second. It's the two out rally, Nick. And it's Daryl George, possibly his last at bat with an afro. <laughs> I would say there's a very good chance he will be shaving that magnificent head of hair after the game for charity. Over $21,000 raised for Council, Council Victoria. And now he steps in. Walk, single, fly out. Scored a run. Kent's pitch a little high. Ball one. Aces three, Cavalry one. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Aces have won the first three in the series. Looking for a sweep. Fouled out of play. One and one count. You're right, Nick. The game has pulled back to that sort of slow pace that we started with. 
That's funny. The walk will do it, won't it? Kent gets the first two pretty easily. Then puts Cruz on. Suddenly the inning's alive. That one misses. Walks will do that to you. Kind of a buzz kill. It really is. We've seen that in all the, the number of games we've called for a couple of years here. Just how important it is to keep those free passes to a minimum. Two and one is the count. And checks the runners. Comes to the plate, gets away from Perkins. Both runners advance. Here we go again. Fourth one tonight, if my count is accurate. Yeah, that's four from Camber's pitchers. Yeah. Frank Gailey had two, Dean Stoka had one, and now one from Steve Kent. Yeah. They ended up proving costly in the first inning because it allowed Daryl George and Gifton Gopi to score on that Delman Young single. Yep. And it could be in a similar situation here, Nick, now that we've got Cruz on third and Gope on second and Daryl George at the plate. 3-1 count as well. Two outs. George check swing, sort of accidental foul that time. That goes as a strike though. So full count, three and two, two outs. Runners won't be running per se, but they'll be starting to move. Kent comes to the plate. George stays alive, fouls it down. Really good battle. Third baseline, sure is. Blake Galen's on deck. George slowly steps back into the batter's box. Kent gets the sign from Perkins. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Low. No, called a strike. That late call, George, really unhappy with that call. But that'll do it for the Aces. Get a hit, no runs. We'll move to the top of the seventh. Melbourne three, Canberra one. Top of the seventh inning, Aces lead the Canberra Cavalry 3-1 matinee baseball on this Sunday afternoon from Melbourne's western suburbs at Melbourne Ballpark. Nick and Ed hanging out at the ballpark with you as we take a look live from the Adelaide Hub. Brisbane and Adelaide getting underway, the second game of their doubleheader today from West Beach in South Australia. We mentioned Adelaide won the first game of that 
doubleheader on a walk-off, bases loaded walk. Grant Little! Almost a really good catch in center by Brisbane's. Se or I should say Adelaide's center fielder. I can call two games at once. Let's give this a shot here. Cameron Gibbons is the new pitcher for the Melbourne Aces. He'll face 7, 8, and 9 in Canberra's order. Chavez, Young, Jack Middleton, and James Trevanya, the Los Angeles Dodgers prospect. Flamethrower for the Aces. Gibbons, 1-0 and this season in four and two-thirds innings. He's struck out 10 batters in ERA, 3-8-6. This is his sixth appearance out of the bullpen. His second season pitching for the Aces. So it's the designated hitter, the switch hitter, Chavez Young, bats from the left side, has twice reached on errors today. Kind of weird, the box score will read him 0 for 2, but he reached on a Daryl, I should say, Gifton Gope error in the second, a Jack Berry error in the fifth. Takes a called strike, one from Gibbons. Owen won 94 miles an hour on that fastball. Yeah, it's a good one from Cam. Twenty-five-year-old native of Melbourne, Chavez Young behind the count, no balls and two strikes. Gibbons pitched in three games last season for the Aces. Totaled four and two-thirds innings, struck out five. Locally pitches for the Barrett Cougars, which been signed by the Dodgers in January. Big swing and a miss, strike three. Chavez Young down swinging. Cameron Gibbons has his first out in the seventh. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Jack Middleton. He replaced Jordan Young in the lineup for the sixth inning. James Trevanian shifted from left to third base, and Middleton lands in left. So Gibbons strikes out Young. Change of speed pitch on Middleton. Gets him swinging. No balls and a strike. Hasn't taken many at-bats this season. Just four of them. Misses fifth. Has one hit. Just had a quick tour of the facilities. Nick, yeah. the place is looking great. It is, yes. People everywhere. That, was, that, was that you out running in the... Uh... I did not run. My son is here today. He ran. He finished the, you know, mid-pack, which is I could have sworn but... I saw you at the front of the pack. <laughs> I would have been in the back of the pack, trust me. Good to see Gibbons on the mound. I like to watch him work. 1-1. One, one. Basketball misses... Two and one. Infield is straight up for Middleton. Count is three and one now. So Gibbons behind three and one. Fouled off to the right. Count is full, three balls and two strikes. Big opportunity here. You would think Canberra's got this inning. And the next, I would say, potentially. So the count is full with one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Chavez Young struck out to begin the top of the inning. Neil Medlin got to get some more baseballs from the dugout. Three balls and two strikes. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. Cameron Gibbons blows the heat by Jack Middleton. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to open up the seventh. That's a nice way to start your relief stint, isn't it? Two strikeouts. You can see the dirt flying out of Jake Kromansky's <laughs> glove. Now it's James Trevanian, the third baseman for Canberra, started the game in left field. 0 for 2, a line out and a strikeout. Fascinating that Gibbons uh, wind up, isn't it? That sort of crouch and not something he did last year, That's if I re if I recall. Mm, it's very interesting. Fisted back to the screen. And count even one and one. Crowd in a festive mood, and why not? Aces leading it. 3-1. Looking for the four-game sweep. The Aces only had one sweep last season. That was against Auckland in round two, middle of an eight-game win streak for this team. Aces trying to get their first sweep of the season, stretch the win streak to five. Thirteenth game between these two teams this season. <laughs> Canberra's played 13 games. They've only seen the Aces. I feel like we know Canberra as well as we know the Aces. Yeah, we're getting there. You know? Big swing and a miss. Counts two and two, though I do like the, the additions of a, of a Dean Stoka, a James Trevanian. We saw Hayden Godbold on, on Thursday. Yep. Bringing in those new names to keep it fresh, though I, I guess that's kind of their hands tied behind their back, forced to add in some new players, but Still fun. The 2-2 from Gibbons. Swung out and missed strike three. Cameron Gibbons strikes out the side at the top of the seven, and that'll send us to the stretch. Aces a two-run lead. 3-1. Off to the bottom of the seventh from Melbourne Ballpark. Ed, you ready to call two games at once? <laughs> Brisbane Bandits lead the Adelaide Giants 2-0 in the bottom of the first from West Beach in South Australia. Second game of their doubleheader today. Bandits trying to avoid going 0-2 on the day. Adelaide After, just waiting for another walk-off yeah. win. Nick. Yes, so Maverick, Aces dance crew having a good time. Back at Melbourne Ballpark, I'm Nick. He said, having a blast with you this afternoon. Aces on top by two runs, three to one. It's the heart of the order, three, four, and five for the Aces. Blake Galen, Delman Young, Damick Tomshe with Steve Kent back out for his second inning of relief. Starts Galen off the strike, and Ed, it's worth noting. Oh, how about that? Grant Little, home run for the Adelaide Giants. Bring them right back into that game. Ed, I, I said I was going to try and call two games at once. It's really You've difficult. You've done it. You've just done it. If you're the Aces here, Nick, too, given the history of Canberra Tom with the late rallies, Steve you want to put a couple more across the plate if you can here. Absolutely. Especially with these hitters up. 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One so to the, the, the point that I was going to make, Canberra 
as a flight to catch. So no new inning can start after 340. So with the way this game is trending, looking like an eight inning game this afternoon. Yep. So that means Canberra would only have one more shot. Kent his 2-2 to Galen out to center. Samad Taylor. He has it, one away. So now it's Delman Young, one for three. Had a two RBI single in the first. The difference in the game to this point. Pretty much, yeah. Drove home George from second and Ngope from third. Swing and a miss from Delman Young. No balls in one strike. No runners on. One out here in the seventh. Off the end of the bat. Delman hustling. Kent. He'll flip it to his first baseman, Wilson. <laughs> Delman was trying to hustle down the line, beat that out. Kent was trying to decide whether to take it himself or to flip it in with the glove, flipping it over to Wilson. Probably you may, you may not beat play. Delman Young in a foot race, let's be honest. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> So with two outs, aces up by two runs here in the seventh. Dame Tomshe comes to the plate. A couple singles and a ground out. Singled in the first, singled in the fifth. Takes a calm strike, going one, one. So Ed, it looks like after this, I'm going to go head down, get ready to toss yes. it to Daryl George. Literally, as soon as the game ends, we're grabbing Daryl out of the high five line, plop him in, down to the barber's <laughs> chair. His barber's ready to go. We're going to have some fun. You will see that live. There's a shot of Daryl George in there. The stats, Nick. Look at that. 21-7-0-7 raised with the wonderful contributions we mentioned from Jet Curry to really bump that up. But that's great stuff from Daryl George. All money going to a great cause. Cancer Capsule Victoria. 0-2 oh, out to center. Taylor coming in. He calls off his right fielder, Tucker Nathans. Watch out. <laughs> and that's the final out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So, Ed, I'm going to let you take this game home. I'm going to go get ready to have a chat with uh, with Daryl George. I can do that, Nick. We will see how uh, this goes. You will see that live here on the live stream. There is Daryl George, and we'll have that very shortly. Australia, it's our great low prices that make the difference, especially during our once a year stock take sale. For two weeks only, all products are half price. Yes, half price. You Blinds Australia, more value for you. <laughs> Welcome back to Melbourne Ballpark. Ed Wyatt with you. Nick Batters, my on-air partner, is heading down to do the Daryl George haircut. We'll talk about that in a minute as you look at Josh Tolles. Another new Aces pitcher, 2-0 with a 3.86 ERA, 7 innings pitch. Strikeouts to walks, eh. You'd like that walk ratio to strikeouts a little bit better, 7-6. He's got a wicked curveball. 
so we will keep an eye on that as he tries to set the Canberra Cavalry down here in the top of the eighth, with the, which is essentially, it will be the last inning of the game. Canberra on a tight schedule to catch that flight. And there's that bag of rice we talked about the other night. Josh Tolles won that after pitching a no-hitter in the Japanese league, a big bag of rice. No such prize for him tonight, but he can keep the aces in the winning column here if he can deliver. He's the fifth pitcher of the night after the starter, Dan McGraw, left with an apparent injury in Siondo Ellis and Gibbons pitch before him. So Tucker Nathans leads it off here. It's the top of the order for Canberra. They need a couple of runs to tie it. That's in for a strike. One and one is the count. Lefty delivers. That's hit high into right center field. Late start from Galen, but he comes over and makes the play easily. One away. Um, Samad Taylor now steps in. Should mention again, Daryl George, Ace's third baseman, will cut his hair for charity at the conclusion of this match. Raised more than $21,000 for Cancer Council Victoria. And Nick Batters will have that for you live here at the conclusion of this game. Nick's first ever live call of a haircut. One ball, no strikes on Samad Taylor, the Blue Jays farmhand. There's that spin rate we talked about, 2,900. Number of rotations that ball is spinning. That's hit high into the outfield as well. Underneath it is Damick Tom Shea makes the play, two down. So Mikey Reynolds now is the last chance for Canberra. Only three hits on the day for Canberra. And that's sky high too, and this may be it. Galen's under, and he makes the play. Three pop-outs, fly-outs here. In the eighth inning, which is essentially the ninth inning, because that is the last inning we are able to play because of scheduling. And the Melbourne Aces sweep the series from the Canberra Cavalry with a 3-1 win today on the 2-0 win in game three, 4-3 win in game two, and a 9-7 win in game one. So all the games tight, all the games well played. And Canberra, even with their reduced roster and lack of rostered players, puts up a heck of a fight, but just can't do it as the Aces win it 3-1. Five pitchers get the job done here for Melbourne. Hey, look at John Diebel out there, Aces coaches. And why wouldn't they be happy with a win and a sweep and the remain in first place in the Australian Baseball League? Take a look at some of the highlights here. First inning, couple men on. Who else? Delman Young. Single to his favorite spot, left center field. Scores in Gope and George. Aces take a two nothing lead. And when the Aces take an early lead, they usually win. There's that shot from Big Dell, the professor of hitting. Does it again. The 
game. The Aces, a 2 nothing lead. There's Chavez Young getting on. Got on base twice tonight, both from errors. There's that throw into left field that got away from Perkins. Throw went a bit high, and Gifting Gope came in and scored. That gave the Aces a 3-0 lead after two. There's Daryl George. Samad Taylor. Always a threat on the base paths. Toronto Blue Jays farmhand. Look at that. Head first slide was in pretty easily there. Aces, as we mentioned, always in control. Even though the final score of 3-1 was relatively close, the Aces never were really threatened. Look at some of the fans here at the ballpark as the Aces win this one 3-1. Now, my partner Nick Batters is down with Daryl George. We'll get to him shortly as you see some fans filing out or around maybe to get a look at Daryl George and that magnificent head of hair about to be removed. And I'm going to throw down to Nick Batters as we see this haircut unfold for a very, very worthy cause. Do we have to do it? Is it too late? Is it too late to pull out? <laughs> I think we're on, right? Um, get the shears out. Get the shears out. Are we rolling or what? There you go. Let's cross down to Nick Batters. Diamond side with Daryl George. Daryl, it's finally time. It's time to cut your hair. How are you feeling right now? Uh, pretty nervous. Yeah, like, I didn't realize how attached I was, but um, it's, it's finally sinking in right now. So, yeah, it's, it's too late to back out. How great has the last week been seeing so much uh, positivity come together in the baseball community to raise the money? It's been phenomenal. Um, it's so good to just see the community, everyone get around it. It's, uh, it's obviously for a really good cause and um, very meaningful to the team and to a couple of guys inside in that clubhouse. So it's just uh, really beautiful gestures from everyone all around. Well, let's go ahead and get you in the chair. Good news, I have your favorite light and easy dessert. I know you're worried about getting that in after the game, so we'll all be ready to go. You can enjoy your, uh, your apple raspberry crumble. Yeah, don't get it in me. <laughs> let's do this. How are we feeling, Daryl? Very emotional. Like, uh, mixed emotions right now. Obviously very happy, but also pretty sad, angry. It's hard to explain. Just, I'm just really confused. Okay, one question I've been meaning to ask you. We've had a lot of fans ask, what's the story behind your walk-up song? A little, little slower, more mellow than most walk-up songs are. Yeah, I just uh, grew up in the house with a lot of vinyl records playing. So mum and dad were big fans of that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I've just got a bit of an affinity with it. Love the music, love Eddie James. So yeah, get around it. Big fan. Oh my goodness. A lot, a lot of hair gone already. I'll, I'll let you guys uh, get back to it.
There we go, ladies and gentlemen, Daryl George. What a job. Daryl, before we let you go, a couple of quick questions here. One, what hat size were you wearing this morning, and do we need to talk to Roger about getting you some new hats? Yeah, it was a uh, 7 and 5 eight. It's definitely going to have to go down a couple sizes. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do with my life right now. We'll just, we'll, just, we'll just have to go back to the drawing board. And you want to give a quick shout-out to your barber? Yeah, quick shout-out to... Uh, Garrett over here uh, at uh, Brother Wolf Barbershop in St Kilda. Um, does a magnificent job, obviously. So he handled that pretty well. So he can handle anything you guys throw at him for sure. Daryl, thanks so much. And we raised over $20,000 for a great cause for Cancer Council Victoria. Really good stuff. Thanks so much. No worries, guys. Just a quick thank you to everyone for donating, sharing, getting around it, um, to the Jet Careers for basically matching us dollar for dollar as well. It's uh, been amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Aces sweep the Canberra Cavalry 3-1 this Sunday afternoon from Melbourne Ballpark.